A very good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or good night, depending from where you are in the world at this moment. A warm welcome to this next session of the LRVS. My name is Lars van Dijk. I'm the general manager of Fluitech in Singapore, uh, responsible for the Asia region. And today I have the honor of introducing to you Ms. Aksta Vaish. She's the manager for technology at Hindalco Industries Limited. And she'll be talking about a topic that is close to, uh, to Fluitech's heart as well, and to my heart as well, uh, about improving the reliability of compressors with the next generation lubricants. I can't wait to hearing what she has to say about that. And without further ado, I'm going to bring up Ms. Raish and her presentation. I hope you enjoy the session. And afterwards, we will respond together uh, with Ms. Raish about the questions that you have put in the in the chat room. So please feel free to ask any questions that, uh, that pop up during the presentation. Please enjoy the session. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Akshat Avesh from Hindalco Industries Limited. I'm glad to be here with you all today. Hindalco is a Indian Aluminium and Copper Manufacturing Company and part of the Aditya Birla Group. I'm a chemical engineer and associated with Hindalco Industries from last 11 years as certification specialist. What I want to share with you is the case study about improving reliability of compressor with next generation lubricants. This study is conducted by myself and my colleague, Mr. Rajendra Kule. Before going to case study, first talk about why this study is important. The answer is reliability. What is reliability? Reliability is the ability of machine to perform as intended without failure and within a specified time. It can be measured as the total number of failures divided by the total of type of machine. Why reliability is important? Because by improving the reliability, we can reduce maintenance cost cost due to downtime and also ensure that the products are within the acceptable range. Next question is how to improve the equipment reliability. The first step in improving the reliability is identifying the cause of unreliability. Then create the solution of improvement. And lastly, implement the solution. Now moving forward to case study. Hinalco is aluminium manufacturing industry, having refineries, power plants, melters, and downstream processing. Aluminium manufacturing is a very energy intensive operation. We have a number of power plants. In one of our Odisha power plant, we conducted this study. The methodology which we used in this study. First problem is analyze why equipment is not performing as well. Next, what is required? For performing as like you can type quality and so on. Next step is specification. What are the physical and chemical properties should be to improve the equipment performance? Next is monitoring the system after implementing the solution on basis of operational behavior and parameters. Last is to check the feasibility of solution or cost. Starting with problem analysis. 
in power plant compressed air is used in coal handling ash handling and operating pneumatic instrument lubricated screw type compressor is used in mill reject handling system there are five compressor of same type in the system and all are facing issue of low efficiency and frequent breakdown Lubricant availability is also a problem at that location. We were observing viscous substances, smell, and carbon deposition also. The drain interval is also very less as compared to the recommended. The lubricant used is OEM recommended ISO viscosity grade thirty two mineral oil. Now we have to understand what is the requirement for improving the reliability of compressor. The first is long life of oil without the need for oil. Prevention of acidity, sludge, and deposits. Protection against rust and corrosion. Good demulsificity. Good foam content. We also have to understand what are the drawbacks with the current oil, and how to eliminate the all these drawbacks. We start with studying the synthetic oil, and how they can improve the efficiency of our equipment. If we switch to a mineral oil, from mineral oil to synthetic oil, what are the changes which we can expect? Viscosity temperature property will improve. Thermal and oxidation stability will also improve. Synthetic oil also have better volatility characteristics. Frictional and heat transfer property. Synthetic oil are also free types. Before selecting the oil, we have to check the advantages and disadvantages of each type. There are heat types. POHA base, POA, and ester oil. In terms of viscosity, temp in terms of viscosity, temperature behavior, aging resistance, and wear protection, PAG are best. POA are very good at low temperature characteristics and neutrality towards and paints. Next step is to understand the physical and chemical properties requirement. We identified not only the testing parameters but also the expected test result. Check the performance properties to test that the lubricant should pass at the minimum level. Product compatibility and approvals are also considered, checked, and tested. Lubricant specification for OEM approved mineral oil is shown in the table. Viscosity is 32 CST, density is 0.86 kg per meter cube, particle count is 16, 14, and 11. For better understanding of oil, we compare OEM recommended oil. Same viscosity grade POA and PAG based oil. In table, we also compare the viscosity index, flash point, core point, corrosion test, and extreme pressure test. After understanding the requirements and its specification, we decided to use the POA and PAG based synthetic oil. And check the performance behavior. We selected two inefficient compressors and changed one compressor to POA based oil 32 grade and second one to PAG based oil 32. In the graph, it is showing that in the mineral oil has the oil drain interval of 2000 hours 
and in POA and PAG oil is 10,000 hours. After more than 1500 hours of, of running, we check the performance of both compressor and compare the results to spindle oil. In oil temperature, POA is showing the best results. For better understanding of performance, we also compare the compressor performance before and after the oil. POA-based oil shows the good results as compared to pH-based. At the end of the study, we plotted the running hours and saving observed in three compressors. POA-based oil is showing the maximum running hours with highest savings. So we recommended POA-based oil in all the compressors of same type to improve the reliability. POA-based oil also deliver up to <clears throat> three times the oil drain interval. Compressor oil life also increases due to outstanding oxidation stability and anti wear properties. Data shows that oil remain in good condition with a stable viscosity and low metal wear after operation of one year. That's all for my presentation. Thank you all and good day. Hello, thank you very much, Akshita, for this wonderful presentation. Um, so we actually have one question here, and we'll put it up on the screen. So from Priti Prasad, how long does it, how long it takes for the studies of oil change? Uh, the data is for near about two years. Two for years four, for four compressors. Four compressors for two years. Yeah. So you have done a very thorough um, analysis of its performance. Um, so your final recommendation, if I understand correctly, was to recommend PEO as the carrier, as the base oil for the, the compressors. Um, how does your company or uh, evaluate the commercial uh, aspects of this? Uh, because um, I would guess that the PEO-based formulation is significantly more expensive. Yes. Have you done a bit of an ROI investigation uh, on that part as well? Yes, cost saving is also included in this because uh, we, are, we uh, the plants are our, uh, at very internal location, and availability is also oil availability is also an issue there. So if one company is providing mineral oil and it takes a lead time of near about six months. But sec, uh, different companies providing a uh, POA based oil at PAG based oil in, with a lead of time of two months. This also creates a uh, saving in my transport aspect cost also. I so see. there are very uh, many aspects in cost here, not only the uh, cost of uh, base oil, I see. Cost of transportation and other things also. All are included here. All are included in. And then that gives you a positive uh, ROI when you use a PEO based. Yes, because it also uh, drain intervals is also very high. Mm -hmm. So uh, the lead times contribute in this. I see. OK. All right. We have another question. I'll put it up on the screen here from Christopher Bowman. From where do you get lubricant specification? I guess from data sheets. And how do you put them to use in daily maintenance? Good question. Uh, yes, from data sheet, because the oil supplied by manufacturers, there is also MSDS with that. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, tested all this oil in our lab before any use. OK. As so you... Because we have our uh, in-house oil lubrication testing lab. So as per recommendation, we also check all the parameters uh, in-house also and uh, check that all uh, parameters uh, are within limits or not. OK, so you do an additional QC, or is it also a performance test on the oil? Yes. OK, great. 
Um, all right, this is a very good question that I have here from Mr. Passat again. Can you share the approximate saving of an oil from oil change to PAO, I would assume? Uh, if we talk about uh, only one compressor, so it's mm -hmm. near about three crores. But we have to multiply this because we have a near about six to seven plants at different different locations. If one oil is creating problem in one type of compressor, mm -hmm. so uh, we replicate these uh, oil in uh, other compressors also. Okay, I see. So, forgive me. What was the? Do you happen to know the the savings in US dollar of that? Or you can multiply it by five. <laughs> okay, by five. <laughs> right. uh, we are uh, basically we are we are industrial person, so. <laughs> uh we we can calculate approximately okay i see all right okay, so it gives us uh, an indication at least that's great um i think here we have another question what was the capacity liter of lubricant of each compress compressor uh, near about uh, 210 210 liters, yeah. 210 liter per compressor. Okay. Can we do a reconditioning of used compressor oil? Uh, basically, those compressor in which we conducted this studies are creating so much problem that uh, that oil is not able to recondition. Okay. Otherwise, uh, other oils we we condition, but uh, in these uh, compressor there are suits and uh, all various type of particles. So these oils are not uh, reconditioned. All right, I see. So then I also have a question for you. Yeah. If you uh, had some issues on these compressors before, how did you gener uh, how did you uh, um, generate a good baseline. So basically it means, did you clean the uh, compressors beforehand and make sure everything was, was flushed or did you do some reconditioning of the compressor itself? Yeah, uh, basically this uh, plant is new and these compressor are in were installed in three years back. And after installation, uh, the problem is start uh, occurring. So we have to change the oil, clean the uh, so compressor and uh, change uh, the Max, I think uh, maximum all the things should be changed. Okay. So this is a big issue for us and they, they were the new compressor. So we were not able to change the compressor. I see. So we take up the uh, this uh, problem with our OEM also. Okay. So they said that this is a problem of oil. oil. <laughs> okay. Did the OEM get involved in, in recommending how you should go about this project? Yes, because uh, uh, these are the our uh, greenfield projects and uh, these compressors are new project, uh, new compressors. I see. Okay. So before uh, conducting any study, we have to consult them also. Okay, okay. So you have their, their backing as well. And uh, Yes, otherwise uh, in industry, we don't take the risk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Here is a question that I, uh, I like very much. Is there any possibility uh, to install a kidney loop filtration system in these compressors? Uh, we have to check because uh, this is a uh, maintenance thing. And mm -hmm. uh, what is the condition and what is the system there? I have to check. I am uh, basically a R&D person. Okay. And in maintenance, what, what we have to do and uh, how can we do? I mm -hmm. have to check the maintenance person. So. Okay. This is uh, new for me. All right, all right. Let me see, there's one more question. Can we, that's a tough question perhaps, can we prevent micro-dieseling in compressors? Um, yes. The, the oil also has uh, something to, to do with that, for sure, yeah. Okay. Um. So micro dieseling is a phenomenon of pressure induced thermal degradation. Okay. So that is a multi factor um, issue. Um, there is a way to prevent it, but we would need to look at what is causing it in the first uh, place. Oh, yes. Um, I, would, uh, I would assume. So I have to consult you regarding <laughs> this. <Yes. laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, 
All right, so we have no further questions at the moment. Uh, do you have any further comments you would like to make? Um, I think uh, there are many questions here which uh, I was unable to answer because I'm not a, a formulator kind of. I'll, uh, I am a user. So uh, uh, before uh, starting this session, I am listening to other sessions also. So uh, all are talking about uh, um, oils and how to use them. But uh, I think uh, industrial specialists are uh, very less here. So next time I want to see uh, more industrial specialists. So I also get uh, feedback from other industries and uh, so on. Okay. <laughs> All right, great. Duly noted. All right. Then I think we can end this uh, session a little bit uh, earlier. Um, I think you, you did great in uh, answering the questions and also uh, it was very uh, useful information. Thank you for sharing uh, with us today. Thank you for all the attendees. I hope you have a great rest of the, the conference and hope to see you again soon. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Thank you. Yeah.